Howdy, it is I, Junk, and it's been a minute since we spoke, such as it is, so I thought I would do a quick uh, discussion of the new hangar, some thoughts and updates, answer a question or two, and then we'll get into a little bit of gameplay. So yes, new hangar. The new hangar... Um, I just got tired of myself, if that makes sense. Where, because this is Hangar 1, let's look at Hangar 2 is kind of what I was using before, which is great, and there's a couple interesting things in here, right? The, the Dragoon Hawk, I think it both looks really nice, and it was really fun to play. Only really super effective against Titans, but you know, that's the Hawk for you, what are you going to do? But the problem I was having with it was I, I would run this Hangar, and it would be super predictable for me where I would always start with whatever the new bot I was testing was. In this case, I was it was this Pulsar uh, Fafnir, which is fine. It, it, you know, it's it was okay. It wasn't, like, life-changingly great. It was fine. <laughs> um, but then it would almost always be Angler second, then usually Kepri third, although sometimes Aether if, if, we're, if we're doing that. And then every so often you would get the Hawk or the Behemoth or something. And it was just like too predictable, too boring. Had to shake things up. So this is not like an anti-angler statement or an anti-nether statement or anything like that. This is just I wanted to do something different that I haven't done for a while. Try some different things. So although I say that, and the first spot here is the team captain, the classic. I ran the Flame Fenrir like for three metas as as the only bot that didn't rotate it was great then but with the boost to flames it's even better now uh, so it's it is it is a change because i haven't run it for the last couple metas but it's not i'm not setting the world on fire with that choice the second one on the other hand the raker unfortunately i had to take the i had two futuristic corkers on it but i only have three because i just got it in that recent sale where they had all the old weapons so i had to move it to put it under the Ares. but this raker has turned out so much better than I had anticipated. I knew it had gotten the durability boost and they buffed the damage on glance and actually the, the glance damage is it's not nothing now. You, it actually helps a little bit. Um, but the durability on the Raker with the speed and the, the profile, like the fact that it's low to the ground actually helps in this meta because an angler can blind you but if you're using like corkers and nucleons you're just shooting directly into the center mass of the robot if it's in front of you. So blinding is actually not a big deal. I'm really enjoying this Raker. If, if you have one, I'd say get it out of storage and try it. I think it's actually good enough that it's not going to take over the meta, but it's a completely viable robot that's a lot of fun, and it's just something really different than you've been enjoying lately. The Ares... Um, I can't pronounce the guy's name because there's a lot of characters in it, but I know that it ends in Ares. <laughs> I'll link it below, so check the description asked about running the Ares and said this is the build he uses except he has the Techno Atomizers which I just don't have. I missed that. I missed that meta. I didn't have the Ivory until that recent sale. So this is pretty close to a perfect build that, that he's come up with here I think. Uh, the range is perfect. It, it's like a perfect mid-range support and it is really good at crushing Titans. Um this part of the build, I just, you know, you know, I like repair amps, I like tanky robots, so that may not be official to, to his vision, but it's how I like to play it, anyway. It, it has worked out better than I expected as well. I think both, both the Raker and the Ares have, have outperformed. Um, this is, someone else asked, asked me to run the Decay, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting everybody's names right now, I'll, I will link that as well. Um... I'd, I'd run the Decay Behemoth before, and I'd, I'd run it with Otto, and I'd run it with Andre. Actually, I had to level a new Andre for this, because this is the sixth Andre I think I've leveled. But it's the sixth Andre, and it's like the tenth Behemoth pilot, because I've got, you know, I've got the, the, the Lockdown pilot, the Done Over Time pilot, Peregrine Rain for the rockets, and Otto. And then now I've got six Andres, because I, mu I must have taken that Andre and used it for the Glacier. So I just had to level another Andre, which is fine, because, you know, I've got five Mark III Ardent Behemoths. I, I should have a pretty good range of pilots available at any time, in case I just decide to go full full Behemoth Hanger again for some reason. And then 
this has got to be this this this, this Sonic Blitz with the with the tiger scatters. This has got to be the dumbest looking robot I've ever run. Like this robot's where like the looks haven't appealed to me. You know the weather chickens. I don't like the weather chickens because they look like chickens. But this is an actively ugly robot. This is almost like you went and said, "Give me a robot that is simultaneously so." goofy looking you laugh at it but so ugly it might give you nightmares and that's the Arden Blitz with with the uh, tiger scatter on it like ugh, this is an unattractive robot that said it's also the most effective blitz I've ever run in the sense that there are certain situations sorry that's the uh, echo notifying me of something but there are certain situations where this blitz is just absolutely perfect and one of them is in this gameplay we're going to get into in a minute. Uh, oh yeah, how could I forget? The return of, of the Sharanga. This is, this is another robot that's exactly what you think it is. It is absolutely terrifying, but also very fragile. If you can drop it where they're not looking for it, and... You know, you might only get off five or six shots, but you'll kill a robot with three or four of those shots. <laughs> so it's not a bad, it, it's an interesting trade-off. I'll put it that way. It's an interesting trade-off. You aren't, it, is it going to absolutely turn around games in the way that like the right Indra or Aether drop might? I, I'm skeptical because it's not going to live long enough to absolutely turn around games, but it can completely crush a rally when the team shows up for the team fight and the Sharinka drops in one beacon over that's within the range and just starts picking off picking off reds now that now they've got a choice you've got to take out the Sharinka so so do you leave the beacon you're on and rush the Sharinka just the confusion it creates is, is really useful so uh, I'm having fun with it there's things that the, the original one I before the Ares before somebody asked about Ares I had put in a robot I knew wasn't going to last very long the Al Guang but I put I put cryo rockets on it and it's like I took one of the harder to use robots and put one of the harder to use weapons on it. I don't even remember if I actually got a kill with it. I'm sure there's a video up that I've uploaded where I got like a kill. Um, it was more of a curiosity than anything, I think. So I'm, I was kind of relieved to see the Ares really performing well in its role in that slot. One thing I've noticed that I, I'm already not seeing is many of the weather chickens. I don't know if people in advance of the drone rework are just dropping them. Um, but let's talk, I guess, a minute about the nerfs and buffs. I like them. Okay, we're done. Uh, no, okay, there's more There's more to say here. And I was just responding to a comment about this, but... Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, out of, a, out of a 10 out of 10, I'd say it was like a 9 or 10. Sorry, an 8 or 9 out of 10 is how I'd score the, the nerfs and buffs. There's a couple things I think need to be done better. I would just reclassify the Spears damage category so auto doesn't apply to it. I think that's just the easiest thing to do. I'm not... I don't hate the Spear, and it's not as broken as it was, but it's still an absolute top meta weapon. I mean, maybe the... I guess really the question is, what 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 is the Spear's role, and what should the Spear's role be? But tied into that is that the Kepri nerf still doesn't go far enough. What Pixonic doesn't want to do, it apparently, but what they need to do is nerf the Kepri in targeted ways that fit it into its role. They keep applying these across-the-board nerfs to the Kepri, where they're just shaving it down all over, and they say, oh, well, your, your uh, recharge time is going to be longer, and you're a little bit slower, and you're a little bit less durable, and that's a, that doesn't address, I guess, the core issue, which is this robot is supposed to be a support, and it's viable in every other role. If the issue is that Kepri's are tanks, the answer isn't to make the reload on the ability longer. The answer is to make them less tanky. It sounds obvious when you say it that way, right? <laughs> but, it's, but that's what we're, we're being told. Well, it's, it's, it, it should be in a support role. And also, we're going to nerf it in ways that have nothing to do with its support role. Like, changing... If anything, you should reduce the, dur the durability more and make the recharge on the ability shorter to more encourage people to play it as a support. Like, you don't make a robot fit into a support role by making it less good as a, as a, as a support and less good as a tank. So I, I think that's a problem with how they've conceptualized the Kepri nerfs. The, the problem with the... The reason why I think the spear 
damage type should just be reclassified is that we've now created a, a world where the only viable pilot for this spear is Otto. Except they made this spear a weapon that they wanted to be released with the Nether, and the Nether pilot is much, much better in, in, a, you know, in every situation. So it, it seems like we're being told this weapon is meta-viable as long as you don't use it on the robot we intended you to use it on. And I feel like that's a, that's, you know, the, the takeaway is that people are just going to keep putting it on Kepri's. So if you're not going to make the Kepri not tanky, and you're not going to make the spear not work with Otto, you're going to get spear Kepri's from now till the end of time, which I think in its current iteration is still slightly, I would say slightly broken. Not as broken as it was, but I, I still think it's slightly broken. So anyway. Uh, what else to talk about? Let's see. No, I think we've we've covered the big things. I know that um, I'm going to be careful about my comment replies because I was too salty and YouTube told me I was mean. It's like, I know that. <laughs> I absolutely positively know that. But people are just, you know, I've, I've mentioned it here before. People just come and talk any kind of way to you and it's one of those things where you, I knew that happened and yet it's still worse than I knew if that makes sense it's like I knew that people were just going to say random stuff to Adrian and Manny and whoever not that I'm Adrian and Manny but I knew that the point being I know there, that, that you know it's it's the internet you're going to meet terrible people and yet you still just don't you don't really get ready for it <laughs> mentally and of course, then my default mode is to just be toxic right back, and that's not uh, apparently in line with the family-friendly vision of the platform, shall we say? Anyway, other than that, let's uh, get into a little bit of gameplay here. Okay, let's get started. This is uh, playing back. I played this previously, so I'm just talking now. Which is good, because I can actually face the microphone while I do it. Yes, Raker first. You know, I'm never, I'm never happy to see Canyon. Just funny because I'm looking forward to Yamantau so much, and so you'd think that open spaces would be the thing I'm looking forward to, and it's just not. The thing about Yamantau versus Canyon is that Yamantau, you really couldn't stay in one place and just shoot people from a corner. You could climb on top of something that made you a target, or you could move around different areas where there were obstacles to try to shoot people at range. But it wasn't just a big open space where you were shooting at people, which I feel like Canyon is closer to that. My vague recollection of this game from earlier is that I did not have a spectacular raker run, so to, to, to telegraph disappointment. I know one thing that's coming up here is I move out of this beacon. Even though, like, I don't hold the beacon. Sorry, I play a bunch of games back to back, the screen recording notice comes up. Yeah, I, I don't stay in the beacon because I'm looking at what's shooting at me and I'm looking at what's on the beacon with me and I'm just never going to win that fight. So me getting my robot blown up... Oh, I forgot about that, yeah. I think there's a tanker in this game. <laughs> you, saw, you saw the Cossack walk in front of me. And I say that... Um, when, the, when I saw this first Cossack, my initial reaction was... Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a friend. It's somebody else who likes to run classic bots. I can respect that. But as you'll come to see, I'm pretty sure what we're looking at is just a tanker. <laughs> we'll, we'll see that shortly. So, I, I backed off with the Raker, and now the Raker has lived to come in and fight another day. But so far, uh, still not a great run with it, and I don't think this is the robot that shines in this particular game. And if you look at the left, that was another Cossack <laughs> from this... from. Uh, from the guy whose Cossack I killed the first time. And... That may not be the last Cossack. Nope, there's another Cossack. So... It's like, the good news is I got a double kill. The bad news is it was on two Cossacks. So how good can you feel about yourself? I, I looked at the guy's stats afterwards, and I'd say it's 50-50. He, he's on PC. He, he might be a tanker. But because it's qualifying week, it's also possibly just really outperformed, and the game decided he should be a master, and he's discovering that 
the game might have overestimated. Ah, oh, this is it. My favorite blitz drop of all time. So they kill the Raker. They've got the Seraph and the Weather Chicken. And the Sonic Blitz comes in. Just before they can flip it. <laughs> and takes them both out. You know, I, I haven't... Maybe this is a reflection of my limited ability in playing Blitz. I have not had a Blitz drop that I think has gone better than that. And that's pretty much all I got out of the Blitz. And I'm not even complaining. I thought that was beautiful. That was just beautiful and poetic. So, once again, you know, when, when this Blitz goes down, I'm already bald now. They took my top... my top, uh... Sonics off. When this blitz goes down, I'm, I'm looking at this beacon, I'm thinking, okay, I don't want to drop on it, but I'm going to drop... Oh, apparently I dropped on it. That's not what I thought I was going to do. I, I don't know what changed my mind. Oh, I probably I maybe saw the luchador. Yeah, this is not... This isn't what I would have done it, uh, <laughs> the second time. I was, I was going to drop my Sharinga probably back at beacon A, so I can shoot into it. But I guess I saw the Luchador was there and thought, ah, maybe I can make this work. This game turns very weird towards the end, and we're almost in the weird part. So I'm hoping now, yeah, I can just get in range, let him shoot into my shield. And I just remember having trouble, like, oh yeah, keeping... Yeah, I realized at this point I was dead. Like, I realized I'd come out too far. I was going to be shot from range, and I was never going to be able to get back into cover. Okay, so now maybe is when I drop the Sharinga. In hindsight, you know, maybe this is hindsight, maybe this is just me making a different judgment call in the instant. I would have dropped it instead of the Ares and just shot into the beacon. Especially since there was a Luchador there, like, why spend the Ares? I don't know. You know, Monday morning quarterbacking of my own game is probably not as bad as doing it to other people, so I'll do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the situation right now. I remember when I'm playing that I've got a decent little bit of cover here. I can reach robots, and especially if somebody challenges the beacon, they're going to have to come into my range to contest it, and I felt good about that. One thing I didn't pick up in the moment, but I'm seeing now, based on, you know, knowledge later, is I think the team is starting to mech, which isn't good. Yeah, someone contesting the beacon, and obviously the Aethers figured out this was not necessarily the the shootout he wanted to be in. Oh yes, I this is uh yeah I killed Big Big Greek Daddy Aether a second ago, and Big Greek Daddy is is uh, a champion, <laughs> and uh, he's not gonna let me just sit there and and shoot at people as they spawn in, so. Uh, well played uh, on his part. At this point now, I'm realizing two things. One is, we're actually in trouble. Like, we're actually kind of mecking. And two, oh my god, I'm actually going to have to run beacons in a Fenrir again. I wish I could tell you the number of games that end with me having to run beacons in a Fenrir. It ain't a fast bot. It's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> it's not what I like doing. But it was run beacons in a Fenrir or run beacons in a Behemoth, and that didn't sound better to me. So, here we are. As I'm trying to just stay ahead of the beacon bar and make caps and before time runs out. I wasn't especially concerned about getting shot in the back. I mean, I could tell it was a decay of some kind. But I didn't really care because I'm a Fenrir and it's going to take him a minute to kill me with a decay. And DKs don't inherently apply a speed debuff or anything, so as long as I can keep running, that was fine by me. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, we're actually going to lose this game. I can't believe I'm actually going to lose this game, even though I'm having to do cardio in a Fenrir. I wasn't, I wasn't entering a salty space just yet, but I was more like in disbelief, like, I, I seriously cannot believe this is how this game ends. But I also thought we were down to three players, and I see now we have four. So I guess somebody was just waiting to spawn in to see if they got a better cap, and sure enough, the red team kept contesting that beacon A. It's almost—it's weird. It's almost like a delayed form of hot shotting, where they decided they were gonna just going to keep going after that 
I guess I'd call that a secondary beacon technically. That that I think it's technically a home beacon, but I mean, I've, anyway, one of our beacons and kind of ignoring what's happening in the rest of the map because I think that was a game they should probably have won. Not that I'm complaining. And as you can see, when we get there, yeah, they, the guy on the bottom there, I think I look at his hangar in a second, so I'll let it load, but a really tough game, really good even play, I think, on our side. And let's take a look at the guy running Cossacks. Look, I can respect running Cossacks, but I can't respect running four unleveled Cossacks. If you, listen, if, if you're going to run four Cossacks, one, get good, and two... Please, Mark Three only. <laughs> so there's a little gameplay. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you for sitting through the whole thing. If you're a dog or cat left at home alone by your parents, I'm sure you're a good puppy and kitty, and they'll come back with a treat for you. Talk to you later.